Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Cooper from Beyond the Pitch Chicago. And I'm sitting here with Chris and George hey. from Stick to Your Guns. What's going on, guys? How's things? Things are good. <laughs> Sold out show, Chicago. Sold out night four, right? Yeah, four, four, four in a row. Awesome. That's pretty rad. So, uh, you know, first off, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. I know it's not the first time. Not the first time. Um, especially not the first time in a winter. It's fucking freezing out there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's biting. It's a biting cold. Yeah, you know, once again, welcome to the Midwest. Um, <laughs> So with that being said, congratulations on Disobedient. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's been out a week. Yeah. Uh, a, week today. a week today. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got great numbers. We think. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. We, I mean, we, I we haven't heard numbers yet. We haven't heard numbers yet, but I think I saw I, I saw something that said it was number one on iTunes yeah. for hard whatever. Yeah. Um, either way, that's killer. Uh, the theme of the record and I will dive into the lyrics a little bit. Sure. You know, because it's still a part of it. Um, it is a little bit different direction than Diamond. Uh, as, far, as far as lyrically? Like thematically, you know, the, the overall theme of it, at least that's kind of what I grabbed. There's a part of it that's a continuation of Diamond, uh, but I think uh, it's also a progression from Diamond. Uh, so there's definitely elements that carry over, uh, you know, whether it be like introspection or, you know. And that's kind of what yeah. I was leaning towards. D Di Diamond is very much about like figuring out the self, um, but to, to me, maybe disobedient uh, represents putting what you, putting what you found uh, if you've if you've done a lot of introspection or you've done a lot of like dwelling or, or thinking about you know things in your life or how how you should do things disobedient is you putting them into action yeah that's kind of diamond seemed almost like a a protector role like you're calling people out well, yeah diamond diamond's the thought process while disobedient is the action okay yeah exactly you're so eloquent oh thanks I'm a wordsmith <laughs> wordsmith uh, so three days into tour, this is day four. Yep. Um, like I said earlier, you know, three sold out shows. This is number four. Um, how's how are the fans like in the new songs that you guys are that you guys are playing? I mean, you well, nobody is the first song that we started playing off the record, like previously, like on a different tour, and almost immediately, it, almost immediately, it was like kids were just responding to it. Really? So it's like. We open with that now, so it's like nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you guys been been playing like uh, previous shows, even before the tour started? Have you been playing a song here, a song there? Yeah. Be before know? the tour, we'd played Nobody and What Choice. Okay. Um, and RMA, like kind okay, of. So. Uh, but I mean, most of most of the other songs aside from Nobody didn't go over as well because they were still fresh and new. Sure. Uh, but now, I mean, What Choice has been sitting out there for a couple months now, so What Choice gets usually a pretty good response. Yeah. Uh, nobody gets a great response, and then we're trying out some other new songs, which is we've never gone on tour and had a record like come out right then kind okay. of thing. Uh, so uh, this is like it's uncharted territory for us. It's new. Um, playing songs off a record that's just came out. It's right. super nerve wracking. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, we feel really vulnerable when we're doing it, but I'm really glad that we are doing it because I want to be unapologetic about putting out a record. I want to you know, be proud of it and it, embrace it and own it as opposed to us resting on our laurels and being like, well, we know you fucking love this shit, so we'll just keep cramming this down your throat and then uh, maybe we'll get around to the other stuff. Well, that's, I mean, that's the growth. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's the job. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can only tour for on Diamond for so long. We we extended it three years. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what what do you see uh, response wise? I mean, awesome. That yeah. As far as the new songs, I mean, do you have the same? Well, one, uh, the songs that we've been playing, like What Choice and Nobody, mm -hmm. like I see kids getting into them, and I'm more comfortable with them. Okay. Those songs have we played them on a couple tours already, so yeah. it's like. I feel comfortable with the songs that are like brand new on this tour. It's like some of them are hard to play. So I'm like, ah, just don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> don't you know? fuck up. Yeah. And like after the show, cause George faces the crowd the whole time. I'll be like, how was that? Were people into it? I don't know. Cause I was like just concentrating the whole time, oh, you know? Yeah. Ironically, I'm also concentrating the whole time <laughs> and I can, only, <laughs> and I can only see the front row of people usually. So it's like the front row is stuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, typically, yeah, you could, you know, you could be farting up there and then, oh, right. So, 
you know, as far as the guest vocals that were, were on this, um, and I'm going to assume that that was Jesse's baby again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, did everybody of, have uh, some input in it? Or? I mean, it, we're, they're just, we're all friends with yeah. them, and it's like they all – it just worked out. They were all in California at the time that we were recording in California. So they all didn't just live, like, right down the street. Like, I mean, Well, yeah, yeah they, they, they all did actually live yeah. right down the street. Yeah, yeah. They all live really like, close to the studio. But they're always on tour themselves too, so it's like the fact that we were home recording at the same time that they were home, it just kind of worked out. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, – I, I think it adds a lot – a lot to the record um yeah everybody likes guest vocals yeah. you know and i think the the three that were chosen I'm like how how can you go wrong with i that? liked it too because it's like it's three very distinct styles yeah. which I, I is was, cool like scott is you hear scott and you know it's him and instead of having like two other guys who sound like scott we got like toby who is he as soon as you hear him you know it's him as soon as you hear walter you i was know just gonna him. say when you hear walter so you're cool. like, yeah you know what that is yeah, yeah. you know oddly enough you know the the opening to nobody has that thick uh, bass line and yeah. the drum. You the would drum think that's pattern. where Walter would be. That's exactly <laughs> what. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, okay. that's exactly why we didn't put him there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, where's it at? Where is it at? It's not here. Yeah. But yeah, that's. He even said that that's what he gets stuck with all the time yeah. too. It's like people will be like, hey, do guest vocals, and they always give him the same kind of part all the time. Yeah. So he's. Uh, it's like, oh, this is, this is this sounds like this is what this Walter is would say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, and I guess I didn't think about that. And from a fan's perspective, you're like, I guess you probably come to expect that. Yeah. Okay, here he's okay. He's not there. Son of a bitch. Yeah. But uh, either way, I mean. It, what what are your guys' opinions on uh, on doing a free stream of the the entire album before it comes out? I uh, mean, that's something that really over the last I don't know a year, two years, is almost become mainstream. That everything's yeah. coming out a month or two I, weeks. Yeah, I think the the stream uh, is like a part of the release cycle at this point. Uh, everyone's expecting it. Um, you know, the record's gonna get leaked as is anyways um and i think it's better to anticipate that and find ways to offer alternatives to maybe people like having to go out and pirate it like oh well if you're you know if you want to try it before you buy it here's this here's this album stream you know or you know here's it on spotify as far as i'm concerned within like a week of the record coming out that record's public domain as it is i mean it shouldn't be but that's how it is yeah um and you know Kids are going to pirate it. Kids are going to do whatever they want to do with it. Uh, not that I have anything against piracy. I mean, that's you know that's your prerogative. I'm not here to talk down to you on that. Yeah. Um, but I think offering the stream is a uh, it's a cool alternative. You know, and uh, using alternative press uh, as the uh, like the host was a really cool um, idea. Uh, or not cool. Well, it was cool of them to let us do that because uh, they've, uh, you know, they've always supported our band, but they haven't necessarily given us like big spotlights like that before. So it was really nice of them to do that. Well, they're not heroes. I mean, they. Uh, yeah. They, they, I'm sure they were excited, probably more excited than you to do it. Well, I mean, I. And that's fine. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's certainly a mutual. It, it's definitely a mu uh, yeah. like mutually beneficial, and they, um, you know, we we saw a lot of kids you were writing into us saying like, oh man, I just heard your band because Alternative Press, or I just found yeah. you guys in the in the Alternative Press magazine. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, that's killer, you know. I, honestly, um, what, anything? Nothing. No, that's nothing. That, that nothing. This wordsmith, he's taken over. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> he's owning. He's owning you. Uh, you know, I I watched the videos. You know, the videos from Di from Diamond, the video like for nobody. It almost seems uh, that um, you guys, for the video, almost um, represent the band as like a refuge for you know for the outcast kids, for people that don't belong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the only reason I say that is like like nobody you know you have you have the kid that looks in the mirror he doesn't see anything and all of a sudden you know he's searching 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 and then he finds stick to your guns I, I, and and then he and then he see you know he sees himself my my real question with that is do you kind of have that perception that that you're you're doing justice to the 
to that demographic. I I, I don't want to I don't want to say that it's stick to your guns. So more more so it's the the genre of music, the alternative, the underground scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I I think it'd be pretentious or it'd be pompous of me to be like well, our band. No. Our band. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our rep our band represents this. You know. Right. And I wasn't necessarily saying that. I'm saying no. More, yeah. More of you know, uh, the message, you know. I think it more rep would represent like the five of us, you know. Yeah. It's okay. just it's not like uh, hey come here and we'll save you. It's more of just like for yes. us to be involved yeah. in what we do. We that that's our background. That's where that's yeah. how it's we like, came hey, up. In, you know, we'll, like we'll take you in. No, just like we're we're that kid. You know, yeah. we're that kid that was just like yeah. oh you're like searching for something and then you find punk or hardcore. You know. I